everybody. Um, I wanted to take some time to talk a little bit about the canine knee or stifle. Um, we often get questions about uh, different things that we see in clinic and I'll talk about a little bit about that as well. Um, but just to give you, we throw terms all the time around when we're explaining what's happening and sometimes visual representation uh, makes it a little bit easier. So this is the canine knee or canine stifle. As you can see this top part is the bottom part of the femur or the upper leg bone. The bottom part here, this big bone here is the tibia. This little bone here is the fibula. This big tendon here is our patellar ligament. The patella is a little bone. You can see it on the inside there of the patella ligament. And it normally sits in that patellar groove on the tibia. You can see there's um, ridges that also help keep that in place. Um, another part of the stifle are on the inside and outside of the, of the knee. There's these two collateral ligaments that help keep everything together as well and provide stability. And then on the inside of the knee, we have cartilage, little cartilage pads, and then we also have our cruciates, which we talk about all the time. There's a cranial cranial cruciate and a caudal cruciate. In humans, they call them the anterior and the posterior cruciate. And the terminology is a little bit different because in a quadruped, like a dog, um, that stands on all four legs, we refer to things on the front of the leg as cranial, so it is towards the head. In a human or a biped, it's anterior, it's the front of the leg, because the head is up if that makes sense. So patella ligament luxations happen. There, we usually grade them one out of four. A one means that normally this little patella is sitting where it needs to be, but if we had to, we could push it out of where it's supposed to be. Um, either the groove is a little shallow, maybe those ridges aren't doing what they're supposed to be, maybe there's some other muscular involvement somewhere as well, atrophy that's creating a bit of laxity in that whole area. And that ranges all the way to a grade four, where that patella ligament is not ever really where it's supposed to be. Um, it lives on the medial aspect of that stifle and we can't get it to go back in and stay there. And those usually require surgery um, to fix. Uh, we can rehab, and we sometimes rehab these grade one, grade two luxating patellas by trying to strengthen other muscles to kind of help keep that patella in place. Um, so the other things we often see are cruciate tears, of course. So a cranial cruciate ligament refers to where it attaches on the tibia. So a cranial cruciate attaches at the front of that knee on the tibia. So what it's responsible for is preventing the sliding motion, right? That's what the cruciates do. The cranial cruciate prevents this tibia from sliding forward when the dog bears weight. So when we do a drawer test, which we talk about all the time, we'll say the drawer test is positive. That means that I can take that tibia and I can slide it forward um, while this femur is still stable. And that just means that we have laxity there. The laxity might be less so in a partial cruciate. We might just get a little bit of wiggle that we shouldn't be able to get at all. Um, and again, we do rehab those. We send them for surgery and rehab them after surgery, but we also rehab a lot of conservative cruciate tears, meaning that maybe the meniscus, so the little cartilage pads that sit and cushion that joint are intact. We've got the dog using the leg, and then we're trying to build up some strength in the hamstrings, uh, maybe relieve some tension in the quadriceps muscles on the front part of the leg, um, and see if we can stabilize the leg. Think about this knee and the fact that this is not a ball and socket joint, right? Like your hip is a ball and socket joint. So the things that keep this knee stable are all the muscles and ligaments, all of the proprioceptive feedback. So what that means is your ability to know where your limbs and things are in space, right? So 
All of that feedback is what keeps that knee stable. So if we can build that up with muscle and strength and protect that, the cushioning in the joint for as long as possible, then we tend to do that. So that's just a little bit about the canine stifle. I hope it was helpful. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us. Have a great Sunday.